Hey guys, this is Creative Karma, and welcome back to my room. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these, and it's mostly because there have been things going on in my real life that have made it kind of hard to get myself going in these kind of videos. But I had one of those moments where it just something just hit me, and it made me decide I need to go ahead and try and put my thoughts out while it's still here. It's not a Saturday; it's a Sunday technically, and I just felt the need to talk about something because I was just sitting here like I do most every day and watch random videos on YouTube till I decide to go write something, play a video game, whatever, just kind of getting ready for the week and just, you know, being a general dork as my usual thing kind of goes. But I came across some old videos that I had watched a couple times before because I actually enjoyed it. And one of the ones that it really struck with me about something that's going on, been going on with me, is the movie. It's called Pursuit of Happiness, and it happens. It actually spelled H A P P Y N E S S. It's meant to be spelled wrong on purpose. If you have not seen this movie, it came out back in 2006. It's been a while since this movie has been out and been a new thing. It stars Will Smith and his son when he his son was a lot younger. And I won't spoil the movie or anything, but just go and give it a shot. You can probably watch it on YouTube somewhere. In internet or Netflix or whatever but really there's a moment that get, comes around when at the pivotal moment for this character who has fought so hard and so long to get to that place that everybody else is to be and have that normal life to have everything that everybody says is so easy to get and it hit me that that's the same kind of struggle that people with disabilities face and I face it all the time and I face it a lot you know people who are homeless who are trying to get that job trying to get that that house together trying to keep their families together trying to make as much money as they can to to do all the things that people say you should do and you know make all this money and it's just hard but at that moment you finally get that job you finally are stable you're finally getting somewhere you're it's like you're gaining traction you're not going to be stuck in the darkness anymore that that moment of pure happiness and that you know happens eventually to a lot of people and sometimes it doesn't and that's the sad side of it is that a lot of times people who have disabilities it just doesn't happen because either they don't have the right support system that'll help them get there maybe they have no support system maybe they're not don't know where to go or they're not being directed in the right way or people don't understand a disability or deny their disability or something else I and mean, this leads into a lot of other different things that could happen, but uh, I'm one of the, I'll call myself one of the lucky ones because in the past time since I've done my last video, which was ages ago, it feels like, I have, you know, kind of reached out and finally got a job. I've been working at a job four days a week. It's only like part time, so it's not a whole lot of money. Disability thinks I'm making a whole lot, but it's not really the case. That's something. It's a whole other video. And, you know, if you had asked me, you know, years ago, if I could, if I would ever work for the YMCA, work with children from like a preschool up to middle school age and sort of be, I guess, a child caregiver or anything like that, I would have thought you were crazy. I would have laughed in your face. And uh, back when I did my court case and they said that I could work at uh, not a nursery but sort of like a care center for elementary school kids and you know you that's where they go it's sort of like you know an elevated babysitter where lots of kids show up I, I even chuckled and laughed at that like I can't do that kind of job. What would you think I could do that kind of job? Because that's one person or maybe two people against all these other little kids. You've got to keep them together. I, I don't even like being touched in a certain way. I, you know, I have to be the initiator and all this. Stuff. I, I can't do that kind of stuff. What are you talking about? But I decided because they offered me the job, but I could give it a try because I was going through voc rehab before. And I I've voiced my opinions on this before in the past about voc rehab and all the problems I've been having, how long it's taken, and all the bad things that have happened. But the, they told me at the time that, hey, you can, if it doesn't work out, you tell me, we will 
You can, you know, have put your two-week notice in, but go find another job. It can work out. And so I was like, fine, I'll give it a shot. You know, they, you know, they say they're equal opportunity. They say they're not going to work me on certain days because I've asked off for my disability stuff and things like that. So give it a shot. I ended up moving from one school to another because you could be placed almost anywhere. You know, you could ask, you know, kindly, nicely for certain areas. And I ended up getting placed at a school that I actually had attended when I was a kid, even though now it's it's changed. It's now a magnet school instead of just a middle school like it used to be. And once I got there and once I got settled and once I got used to the way things work and starting to or just without thinking about being able to put everything out where it belongs and getting used to seeing the same children every day. And so it's, I've found that it's not as hard as I was going to make it out to be when I was told I could do a job like that. I thought, are you kidding me? You know, this, this is what I was afraid of the whole time. That, that, that this is, you know, this is the job I've got and it's not terrifying. There are moments where it's days are hard, and I go, "Oh my gosh, if I could only, or what if I could do something?" And you know, you're constricted by certain limitations because of the rules of the job, the rules that are imposed upon this job by other agencies, and it, it just led me to think, you know, am I really happy that back to the you know, please go back to the video, am I really happy with this, like? I can't, I'm not happy all the time. I, as I told, you know, tried to explain to my mom and I've tried to explain it other times. Uh, hold on. That would be my mom calling, but she could hang on for a second. But I've tried to explain this before is that I may be happy on the surface, but underneath that depressed side of me is always there because there's always, it's always simmering and steaming right below the surface. And I never really know when it's going to come out or why, or if there is a why. And, uh, but when I'm thinking about this job and people have asked me about the job and how I'm doing, I can honestly look at them and go, you know, when I'm at this job, there's so much going on and I'm interacting with these kids and some of them who give me hugs when I when they see me or say hi or they immediately want to play a game or something. I can say that for those that brief while, I am pretty happy. You know, it's a decent job. There's decent people there. There's really good kids. There's some bad kids, but not necessarily bad in any negative. They're not horrible children it's just that they're still growing up they're still learning and doing and that's where we all used to be at some point we are all kids at one point but that I can actually do this job and it's an okay job I can't see myself doing this job forever necessarily but you know as a stepping stone as as taking me to another level showing me things and teaching me things about myself that I didn't know about this is a, a great place to sort of start and I could even work through the summer there is summer hours which is kind of great I didn't expect there to be because it's a school related thing I didn't think there was summertime stuff but there is I, I don't know what me think that parents still have jobs in the summertime unlike kids who go to school and so I will get to work on Mondays this time because I can move my stuff around a little bit. There, there is some leeway. But really, it comes down to I actually am happy. I've kind of reached that level, and I, I'm starting to get momentum and starting to do better and starting to feel better. And there's a lot more I could do. There's a lot more stuff that's still up there that's on my checklist of things I want to do in my life. I want to live in my own place. I want to experience what it's like to actually have my own house to live in and while living here is great that this is still my parents house my mom's house and really I know now I could actually do that on my own I could actually live on my own because for the past month now I've been staying at the house by myself and the only reason that it's actually happening at all is because my mom personally is going through yet another sp surgery on her spine and because I have a job and because of the situation I'm at at life, I can't be there to take care of her like I had in the past because I had I didn't have a job back then. I had free time 
all the time to take care of her. But my dad was working. He was bringing in money and all this stuff. So she had to, she had to go to rehab. And she's been there back and forth between the rehab center and the hospital for a month, over a month now. And I found that my body just sort of took over. Like my mind was like, you know, I, I've been clean. I've been cleaning up the house more than I ever have. I've been taking care of the dishes and throw, taking out garbage and taking it to the dump. And I've been taking care of myself in a way that I hadn't before. When my mom was constantly on my back telling me, "You need to do this. You need to do this." And I talked to her about that when I went to visit her yesterday of all days, and said, you know. To me, this just proves that I can live on my own and that if I, somebody's not on me constantly and watching everything I do and judging everything I do and coming up behind me, making sure I've done a good job and all, that I will just do it. My body will know, my mind will know, and my psyche will know that it's something we need to do and it just gets done. I don't think about it taking away time from something else. I just do it. It gets done, and I keep going on with my life like every other person in the world does. They just clean the house. They take care of the dishes. They take out the garbage. They get the mail, make sure the bills get paid. They do these things, and they don't get thrown by it like the rest people who have disabilities. And I think the reason we get thrown by the whole thing is because we've not experienced it yet because either something up here or in here is holding us back or somebody around us is holding us back from doing these things like everybody else. Now, I'm not saying that if you are on the low functioning end of the spectrum that you should expect that all this is going to happen because it some of this stuff may not. But there's a possibility of if we can get out of our own way and convince others to allow us to experience more that we might get better. We might do more stuff. And the sort of thing I, I'm getting from all this is really that it, it is possible for somebody on the high functioning end to find their happiness. And... This is a moment I actually, my mind goes a completely other direction because that's just how my mind goes these days. That I want to explain to people who are watching this and may not understand or they think they understand but they really don't what the difference between high functioning and low functioning is when it comes to somebody's disabilities. Is that high functioning and low functioning isn't about the person with the disability. It's about the people around the person with disability. And what I mean is, is that I have the disability of being autistic. But I have friends and I have family members and church people I'll be around. People in the food industry, people at my work, the kids, those people around me. It's about their experiences and how they, and them experiencing my disability because even though it's in my head and in my body, it's something that they can see at a, on a regular basis or maybe not. It's about the level of how much you see it. People who are low functioning, that means there's a higher probability of people outside seeing the disability and how it affects that person. L High functioning disabled person means that people outside have a lower chance of seeing that disability and how it affects their life. So it's sort of the opposite. And science and medicine is, is full of this kind of thing because when they talk about people who wear glasses like me, you know, there's nearsighted and farsighted. But that when you talk about people who are nearsighted, is that they can see stuff that's they can't see stuff that's far away, but they can see stuff that's near to them. And even though it sounds like they can't see what's near and they can see what's far, and that far-sighted people can see what's far away, but they can't see what's right up in front of their faces. So it's all kind of opposite and sort of it sounds weird, but it actually is not as weird as you think it is. So. High function just means, doesn't mean I experience it less. It means people around me experience it less. I experience it at 
loud volume, at full volume, but I'm able to take medication, use uh, relaxation techniques, use breathing techniques, go and decompress. I have the ability to walk up to my bosses and go, hey, I need about five minutes to go over here and go up and go to the bathroom, sit down for a second, recenter myself, and I'll be right back. Low functioning people on the, on the spectrums of whether it's autism or dyslexics or whatever have a lot harder time coming up to something and expressing their need to step away. They will more often than not have it leak out into the rest of their lives more easily than somebody else and it will affect everybody else just as much as it affects the person who has it. So with me, I, I again, I'm high functioning in that sense. I still have it, but you guys don't see it. It's because it's always in my head, and I'm able to control it for the most part. There are times it does leak out, but those are usually when it's an extreme circumstance where it's something that's really driven me over the edge, and I've either not been able to take care of myself mentally, physically, otherwise, spiritually, whatever. So. Again, if you've not seen The Pursuit of Happiness, I recommend you watch it just for the sake of watching a really good, heartfelt movie that has a really great message and a really good ending and really good acting. Back before Will Smith was this wild and, you know, he was this wild and crazy singer and rapper and all this stuff, and he did some funny movies, but this is one that's really heartfelt, and I think it could reach into the people who are disabled. They can sort of relate to it without being a movie about somebody who's disabled. I, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but it, I have a hard time watching anything with a movie that's about someone who's disabled. I don't know if it's just because I live it every day and I don't want to keep seeing it all the time. While I want people to know about my disability and understand me and help me out with it. I don't really want people to try and make movies about it, especially if they don't really understand it all. Because there's so many things that can go wrong. And there's just that's in a lot of different movies and genres where people are like, don't do this kind of math in movies because you're not making any sense. It, it, you're trying to just take bits and pieces and it, you're doing it wrong. It, the math's not right. The science isn't right. The English isn't right. And the disability isn't right in a movie. So I just kind of avoid it. But this is a movie I think that almost anybody could relate to because it's a very human sort of movie. And really, if I can sit here now and say, for right now, in this moment, I'm happy. And all I could do is that wish that everybody who sees this, everybody who has somebody who they send it to that sees this, everybody who's out there or watching or not, I hope all of you can say right now, I'm happy. And if you're not happy right now, I encourage you, find something that makes you happy. Take time for yourself. Find a time, find a, a place you can get inner peace so you can be happy at least five minutes a day. You may not be able to be happy every day. You may not be able to be happy at the same time every day. But find some sort of place that you can make yourself happy and go, this place exists. So when those days come and you can't be happy, you could have the memory and have the secret knowledge that there's a place you can go to once the storm is over that you can go and be happy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like what you see and you want to see more, you can uh, hit, the, hit the subscribe button down low, hit a like button if you really like it, and if you have any ideas or any thoughts or any concerns or any questions you would like answered about disabilities that are around autism in general or what I do or who I am, please leave it down in the comments or send me a message. I'm also on Twitter, so you can send a message to me through Twitter at Creative Karma. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya!